let's say you are traveling from building A to building B within a city and there are different roads that are getting connected from point A to point B. Now, the traffic for you to go is open. Now, if things have to be controlled, then there might be traffic lights that put in, there might be several routes that might be shut down due to different reasons. For example, it is military area or something like that. So, there has to be something put in place so that you should not take a particular road to a particular place in a particular route. Similar to that, in Kubernetes, every pod can talk to every other pod across namespaces. Now, this is the default Kubernetes behavior. So, what do you do in that particular case? There is a concept called network policies that you can use to prevent the pods from communicating to other pods. Basically, you can control the inbound and the outbound traffic. In this particular video, we'll be discussing about network policies and we'll get to advanced examples of HTTP as well. Now, network policies can be a bit hard to understand, but what we are going to do in this particular video is we'll be trying to do hands-on with different scenarios so that we can understand it better and how we can prevent the traffic from flowing from any pod to any other pod. In general, there should be a way where you want one of your application to be getting the traffic from a particular CIDR range or pods or things like that. Now, Although network policies is a built-in Kubernetes features like kubectl get network policy, it is already a built-in feature, but the implementation part of it lies in the CNI, which is the container network interface. So what CNI you are using for your Kubernetes cluster will define how you can define the network policies. Now, in this, what we are do going to do is first we'll use the standard network policies. Now in network policies, there are some restrictions. Uh, to overcome that, you use the concepts of service mesh and at some of the advanced concepts where you want to limit or allow the HTTP kind of traffic as well. But certain CNIs like Cilium does give you the capabilities to create some custom resources cluster-wide and namespace-wide for even HTTP traffic as well. And we'll be going to do that advanced example also. So let's start uh, with the kind of basic one. So this is killer coda Kubernetes uh, cluster kubectl get nodes. We have to note cluster kubectl get network policy. And you can say there is no network policy currently. And let's see the default behavior, what happens. So let's say you are creating kubectl create namespace dev1 and kubectl create namespace dev2. And you create two pods, kubectl run nginx1 hyphen hyphen image nginx in dev1 and then you create the nginx2 in dev2. So let's do kubectl get pod siphon a and you can see we have nginx1 nginx2 running. Now what we'll do is kubectl get pod siphon o wide hyphen in dev1 and kubectl get pod siphon o wide hyphen in dev2. So we have two pods in the different namespaces. Uh, now let's try to do kubectl exec hyphen n dev one. Pod name is nginx one hyphen hyphen curl. And let's try to curl the second pod and we can see welcome to nginx page. So by default, the behavior this shows is that every pod is able to communicate with every other pod. So now what we are going to do is we will be creating a network policy. So here there are two things. First is the API version. In the spec section, you define pod selector and policy types. When the pod selector is empty, means the policy is applied to all the pod within the specified namespace. And in this particular case, dev2 is the namespace. So we can also specify the selector if we want to target a specific pod. So in the pod, we can also select specific pods in a namespace. So right now, it policy applies to all the pods in dev2 namespace. Now, policy types specifies two types of policies. One is ingress, which means the policy will apply to incoming traffic. And one is egress. Right now, the policy is ingress since there are no rules defined inside the policy. So that means there is no incoming traffic to the pod in dev2 namespace allowed. So let's apply this. Now let's try to run. And 
this time it doesn't run because we created a network policy in the dev2 namespace and there is no network policy there is no traffic allowed no ingress traffic allowed in this particular namespace and if we do kubectl get pods hyphen o wide f1 and dev2 and if we try to curl the pod from dev2 to dev1 in the two namespace that should work because the outbound traffic is fine from the dev2 namespace so only the incoming traffic is restricted with this particular network policy which is the deny network policy now we want to allow the traffic so the pods which are there in the dev2 namespace we want to allow the traffic on port 80 from dev1 namespace so the next network policy that we are going to define will be allowing the traffic so it allows so this particular network policy again applies to all the pods because pod selector is empty so this particular network policy applies to all the pods in dev2 namespace and it allows ingress incoming traffic it allows the incoming connections from the namespace selector matching the meta kubernetes dot metadata name dev1 so it allows the traffic from namespace dev1 so all the pods from namespace namespace dev1 it allows the traffic to the port 80 and now if we try it should again work so we are now sending the curl request from dev1 to dev2 namespace and we have allowed this network policy and also we can check that the incoming traffic to the dev2 pods are not allowed from any other pods so let's create kubectl run nginx hyphen hyphen image equal to nginx kubectl get pods so we have this now what we'll do is instead of this we'll try to exec in the default nginx pod and try to do this it will fail because the traffic is only allowed from the pods in the dev1 namespace and this one is in the dev1 namespace so this proves that it allows only tra traffic from particular ports also next what we can try is since we defined in the network policy that the incoming connections are only allowed in the dev2 namespace ports only on port 80 so now let's try to create a pod in the dev2 namespace on port 8080 so for that we can run a simple kubectl run stdb echo and in the dev2 namespace listening on port 8080 and now kubectl get pods hyphen o wide hyphen n dev2 so it's running now let's expose it as a service kubectl expose pod hyphen hyphen port 8080 kubectl get svc hyphen n dev 2 and now let's try kubectl exec to this engine x1 and we can see it is timing out because even though the pod is in dev 2 namespace but the port that we are trying to connect is on 8080 and we have allowed in the network policy that only port 80 traffic is allowed to receive the incoming traffic so now this should help you understand what network policies are what are some of the pod selector stuff and how you can select it now let's try to understand and go even deep deep further because i want to showcase one advanced network policy but before that uh, i want to show you one thing which is called the editor.networkpolicy.io so this is a kind of a ui and this is like movable thing over here and what it does is it has some of the tutorials and it lets you explain the concept of network policy you know allowing it on port 80 allow egress traffic all these things you can allow ingress traffic from a specific cluster so you can see this particular network policy is allow from a namespace network policy it is applied on the namespace 2 pod selector is all the pods in the namespace 2 policy type is egress so egress everything is denied right now so you can see egress is denied you can see egress there is no egress which is there but we also have egress to namespace selector cube dns so egress to cube dns is allowed so you can see egress flows to cube dns is allowed and then ingress is allowed from 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0. So you can see this ingress from the IP blocks. So ingress from any endpoint outside the cluster will be allowed. So like this, you can actually understand 
the flows, the green, red colors makes it easy to understand the flows. And you can create a network policy, upload over here, see what the flows are and you'll be able to understand. So now the network policies won't be able to help you with the HTTP traffic. So for example, if you have to allow the traffic from ingress. So what happens is uh, the traffic comes from ingress and the traffic then goes from the ingress pods to the service and then to the pods. So if you have to allow that, there are certain ways you can do. One is using service mesh and stuff, but one is also using Cilium. So if you have, like I already have a Kubernetes cluster where the CNI is Cilium. So Cilium provides some of the custom resources that lets you create some of the complex policies. For example, it lets you do layer three, layer four, and layer seven. Layer seven network cannot be done via the standard network policies. For that, we need to use some of the external mechanisms. But if you have Stelium installed, you can also do layer seven with DNS, Kafka based and HTTP. So let's do one HTTP network policy using Cilium and see how we can do it easily so that we don't have to go the service mesh route. So you can see in this particular cluster, I already have Cilium, okay? So Cilium is there in this particular cluster. Now there is a deployment, cat deploy. So this is a standard Nginx deployment. And here just one additional change is the volume mode. So we are taking additional config map, which is nginx.on and the nginx.on is nothing but we are saying if the location is slash public, like if we go to slash public URL, it should say returning to 100 so that we can check when we are sending the traffic from ingress. And then we have kubectl get svc. So we also have nginx ingress controller, which is deployed with a load balancer. So till here, we have all these things. So now let's deploy kubectl. So first create a config map. So first let's create a config map. And now let's create the deployment. Then we have service. So service is pretty simple, pretty standard Kubernetes service. So kubectl apply hyphen f svc kubectl get pods. The pod is running. Now let's try to create a network policy. So network.yaml. So this is a Cilium network policy. Now we are trying to create a Cilium network policy because we want to create it on a rule, HTTP rule. So what we are saying is, first is the endpoint selector. So we are matching the app Nginx over here. Then allowing the ingress traffic from the endpoints, matching the labels ENV prod to the ports of port 80 on HTTP get slash public link. So let's create this. QCTL apply hyphen F network. Now let's test this with a pod. So we have a pod, which is a compliant pod. It has the label ENV prod. And let's try to run this. QCTL apply hyphen F test. QCTL get pods. And the pod is running. Now let's try to exec and curl and you can see access to the public granted and that was that's what was mentioned in the nginx 200 slash public so means it is able to get to slash public so we exec and we did the nginx service slash public and this we are doing it from inside the pod but wait what we want to do is we want to go a step further and we want to do it from the ingress so what we'll do is we'll create an ingress. Now what we are doing is we are creating an ingress and we want to hit it from outside the cluster. And once the traffic, obviously the traffic here is going from this particular host. If it goes to slash public, it should go to the Nginx service. So let's create it. kubectl apply hyphen f ingress kubectl get ingress. So we have this. What we can do is we can do a curl slash public and we see it is kind of not working now the thing is this request is coming from the nginx ingress pod which is first not running in the default namespace so it is running in kubectl get pods hyphen a it is running in this particular 
namespace which is ingress nginx so that is the pod which is running the controller pod in the in this particular case what we need to do is we need to apply a new kind of policy which is a cluster wide policy so in cilium you can also do a cluster wide policy which is cilium cluster wide network policy and here if the env is broad rest all stuff is same but the policy is cluster wide so let's apply this kubectl apply and we'll delete the previous one kubectl delete hyphen f network kubectl apply hyphen f np because the name is same that's why we have to label the pod env prod so kubectl label pod hyphen n ingress nginx env prod so it already has kubectl get pod hyphen n ingress nginx hyphen hyphen show labels so we can see env prod is there now let's try to run it and we see access to public granted so this is how you can do one of the complex scenarios of HTTP using Cilium network policy. So I showed you the basics of network policy, some of the basic examples, one complex example from allowing the traffic from one particular namespace to other particular namespace on a specific pod and then how you do it from one particular namespace in one particular namespace using Cilium on HTTP and then cluster wide so that you, your ingress works in the cluster wide network policy for Celia. So I hope you get a gist of what network policy is. I think the, with the combination, so one of the best things that you can do is have Celium as the CNI that you're using for your Kubernetes cluster. If not, then you have to go for service mesh if you have to do the layer seven network policies. So, so if you are using Celium, then also you can use the layer three and layer four with the default network policies. And if you want to do layer 7 and you have Cilium, then use Cilium network policies. You actually can do Cilium network policy for layer 3 and layer 4 as well. There is extensive documentation and example on the Cilium docs. So that was it about network policies. It is a native Kubernetes resource, but it, its implementation is dependent on the CNI that you have with your Kubernetes cluster. So I have shown you the examples of Killer Cola that was having Calico at the time of the recording. And then a Kubernetes cluster with Cilium, where we were able to create a layer 7 Cilium network policy at the Cilium cluster-wide network policy as well to allow the traffic to a pod from a ingress controller. So that's how you can do some of the advanced stuff. Let me know in the comments how you use network policies. And if you like the video, then please uh, do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and share the network policy information with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.